Hello everybody, welcome to Baseball Card Illustrated. I'm Bronco. Unfortunately, Kevin is out on assignment today, but he'll be back next week. And you're watching the show about our national pastime, illustrated by these things right here, baseball cards. It's going to be an interesting show today as we have 1989 Tops, the real one, which we will open while we talk about a few changes we're going to make to the series. And all kinds of fun things that we have in store over the next weeks and months ahead. So without further ado, let's get to ripping and we'll take a look at the real one, 1989 Tops. Of course, everybody probably knows that this was part of the junk wax era, but there's still some good ones in here. Our base today is actually Randy Johnson. So we'll be looking for him in here along with some of the others. Um, big rookie cards back in the day were Gary Sheffield, Greg Jeffries, and there's a pretty nice list of stars, although obviously not a tremendous amount of value to all that. But let's open up and see what we can find here in pack number one today, uh, 1989 Tops. And we've got the big cat, Andre Scalaraga, right there in his Expos uniform. Power hitting first baseman, obviously went on to have a great career with the Colorado Rockies after he joined the expansion team in the early 90s. And... Certainly can't talk about the Expos without those great hats. Certainly Expos fans would remember that they became the World Series champion Washington Nationals. And I was kind of hoping last year during the World Series, especially when the Nationals were behind in that series, that they were going to bust out the Expos jerseys to kind of change their luck. But that didn't happen, but apparently they didn't need it either. So anyway, there's the big cat. <laughs> Um, move on to the next card. Here we got Gary Ward, who played for a bunch of teams, the Twins, the Rangers, and in this one, the outfielder and first baseman was playing for the Yankees. Can't talk about World Series heroes without talking about this guy here, Brett Saberhagen of the Kansas City Royals, and obviously he was a part of that team when they won the World Series, but... As you look up here, we have an addition, the official pitcher now of Baseball Card Illustrated, Walt Terrell, pointing that out because that's a new addition to our backdrop, backdrop here. And it's kind of funny that he sort of missed a bunch of World Series teams. He just missed the World Series with the Mets, just missed the World Series with the Tigers, two of the teams that he's probably best remembered for playing with. Anyway, Brett Saberhagen, successful career. In 1988, he's coming off a year in which he went 14 and 16. There's a record you don't see very often these days. The 3.80 ERA, he threw nine complete games in 35 starts. Up next is Bo Diaz, followed by this guy here, Ron Darling, and probably the best Mets pitcher of this era, other than Doc Gooden, coming up next, and that is. David Cohn, who obviously would go on to a long, successful career with a number of different teams. The Mets here, he pitched for the Royals, the Yankees, and ooh, we got a good one next. We are talking about some of the early career cards of certain players, and here's a perfect example of that. This is future Hall of Famer Craig Biggio, who started his career as a catcher and went on to play second base, one of the killer bees with the Astros as they had a real nice run of successful teams through the 1990s and into the early part of the 2000s. So we'll kind of clear the deck here and we'll put Craig Biggio aside. One of the things that we're going to do here at Baseball Card Illustrated is put together the All Kevin and the All Bronco team and that's going to consist of probably about 12 players um, and a manager, got to have a manager. And as we talk a little bit about teams, maybe we'll throw a team card up here, the uh, Cincinnati Reds, for you all to look at. And we're just going to see who has, who's able to come up with the most cards as we do these episodes and fill up a sheet of, a player sheet of, you know, binder here. Um, so that would be kind of fun. Kevin and I have put together our teams, and we have a couple of those players already mentioned um, on these videos we talked, um, I got left fielder Barry Bonds, right fielder Rob Deere, a couple of the guys, um, starting pitcher, right-handed and left-handed we're going to do. I got Greg Maddox, so we've seen a couple of those players. 
Kevin has had a couple of his players come up, so we'll track that over the next videos and have a little bit of fun with that and see who can come up with the most player cards and manager cards of those particular players. Taking a look at the rest of pack number one here, we got number one draft pick Mark Lewis. Kind of an interesting design there for, where, where do he play at? can't see this. Hamilton. I'm assuming that's a, that's a high school. In fact, a Greater Miami Conference team selection four seasons at Hamilton High School. Mark Lewis set national high school standards for career hits and runs batted in. So didn't know what position he played there from the look of it. He was a, he was a shortstop. And then as a freshman, he hit a two-run home run against Princeton, giving Hamilton a 5-4 win for the league title. So there's Mark Lewis, everybody. Unfortunately, don't really recall him making it too deep into a big league career, but the next guy certainly did have a nice, long, successful career. The Hawk, Andre Dawson. We've come across a number of cards of Andre Dawson already here on Baseball Card Illustrated. A lot of them with the Expos, and then obviously this one here is a member of the Chicago Cubs. And he had quite an impact for the Cubs when he joined the team. And speaking of Cubs and former Cubs and players that had quite an impact, this is probably an unfortunate throwback card. As we turn back the clock and look at could have been for the Cubs with Lou Brock. Had a, obviously a very successful career. One of the great base stealers in the history of the game. Going back to Andre Dawson for a second. Back in 1987, he clubbed 49 home runs, drove in 137 RBIs, and batted 287 during an MVP year as the Cubs got a heck of a deal there in free agency as he left the Expos. And, yeah, Lou Brock kind of the opposite thing. The Cubs traded him, and that one didn't quite work out too well for the South, or I should say for the North Siders. Here's Tom Candiotti. Here's a guy that we've had a few times make an appearance, and he was the unofficial sponsor of our last episode of Baseball Card Illustrated when we took a look back at 1988 Fleer and the little candy stripe design. We got Roger McDowell coming up next. If you are looking for some clothing, you can send in 1995 plus a dollar fifty postage and handling for this little item here, nice little sweatshirt for you as we get into the spring and you can enjoy the outside and the elements with that little number there. And finally we got Ed Vandenberg rounding out the lineup here on the opening pack of 1989 Tops. We busted out the shadow meter which we use to keep track of subscribers here on Baseball Card Illustrated. Please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and leaving a comment down below. Now, on to the next pack of 1989 Tops. Time for pack two here on Baseball Card Illustrated as we dig into these bad boys here. 1989 Tops, the real one. I was kind of wondered why they called it the real one as though somebody was trying to make some kind of claim that they weren't real. Well, let's see uh, for real what we get here. And, oh, we're going to start with one of my favorites. Here's a, here's a classic. Manager card of good old Davey Johnson, who obviously guided the Mets to a World Series championship in 1986. And kind of a memorable but fairly short run for him with the Mets. And you can't talk, though, about World Series and things from the 80s without talking about the Minnesota Twins. They'd win in 1987 and 1991. And one of the guys that was part of that was Juan Berenguer. Got a great story about Juan Berenguer that might be worth a uh, video look somewhere on YouTube after this episode. We'll remind you at the end of this one to go check that out. It's the Berenguer Boogie. The uh, Twins released a music video because those were always classic when those came out in the 80s. And this one's certainly part of that um, legacy of great, tremendous things from 1980s that probably didn't stand up at the time and look even more classic now, but Juan Berenguer, a big, powerful relief pitcher, a righty, and he, he made some memories, I'll tell you that much, in the late 1980s. Here's a uh, look at 
Phil Bradley, who played for the Phillies. We got Bob Melvin, long baseball career, um, certainly in the sport. And oh my goodness, look at this card here. This is a young and, dare I say, somewhat svelte edition of John Crook. That, that, is, that is quite the look for Mr. Crook there. Um, one of the more memorable figures of baseball at the time. Um, good hitter for the Phillies. Helped them get to the World Series. And this was very early on in his career. He had two years in it big league seasons coming into the 89 season and had batted 313 as a rookie in 138 games for San Diego and then backed that up with a little bit of struggle in 1988 batting just 241. He had 20 home runs as a rookie for the Padres. Had a two home run game in 87 and a four hit game in 1986. So the Cruck, the Cruckster. Um, here's a uh, Old school baseball name, Joe Orsalak. Got Rod Nichols, who's looking quite dapper in those glasses. And then here's here's another guy that played on a lot of good teams. Um, Kevin, I'm sure, was probably a fan of this guy back in the day. Mark Lemke, uh, Kevin, a Braves fan, and had a good chance to grow up and see some terrible baseball in the 70s and 80s and some outstanding baseball all throughout the 90s and more or less, pretty much since then. Got Steve Lyons here. Randy Brook or Randy Bacchus is up next. He's a uh, pitcher from the Giants organization. So Roger Craig getting an opportunity to look at one of his former guys who would call out of the bullpen from time to time. And he would even face. Well, I don't actually know if he faced him, but potentially could have faced our next card here in a World Series game as we go with all-star card of Jose Canseco. Jose Canseco obviously had a very memorable career as a power hitter, the first member of the 40-40 club in the history of the major leagues, and certainly one of the more interesting figures to ever come through the sport, that's for sure. As many would know, he helped kind of blow the whistle on steroids and everything like that. So Jose Canseco, one of the Bash brothers. Got one of the better players of my youth, Don Mattingly, the first baseman, Donnie Baseball. Isn't that a classic nickname, Donnie Baseball? He takes a look at this bat here. Um, take a look here and see what Don Mattingly did at the plate here in this era. He batted 343 to lead the league in 1984, followed up with a 324 average, a 352 average in 86, 327 in 88, and 311 in 1988. Now, the thing that we'll talk a little bit about with Donnie Baseball here is, you put this back here, the date of birth, and I don't know how well that's going to show up because you got the red background that, you know, Topps decided to go with back in the day. On the 1987 Topps card, and this story just came out fairly recently on ESPN, it was a pretty good read if you're interested in that, talked about how Don Mattingly, his date of birth on his cards is listed as 1981, I'm sorry, 1961, he was born in 1962 it said. Apparently the story behind that, as we put up Donnie Baseball up here, is that he was struggling a little bit at the plate in 1986 at the time. And to get around answering questions about how he wasn't hitting the ball very well at the time, he came up with this story about how the media guide and everything had the wrong year of birth. And all of a sudden he went on a nice hitting streak and nobody talked to him about it again. So Topps kind of caught wind of the story that he, they had the wrong year and changed it on one card and put a little disclaimer on the 87 edition. And it turns out it was just a story he made up to... Change the topic during a little bit of a slump at the plate. So, Danny Baseball is having a little bit of fun. And who else is having more fun than this guy here? Mookie Wilson. Gotta love the name Mookie. I can think of a couple Mookies in the uh, world of sports, but I, I think this has got to be the original. Maybe we'll check that out and put a little note on the screen here when we figure that one out. Um, two cards left in the pack. We got 
Mark Parent, and his son, Bob McClure. Well, yeah, obviously not his son, but he's a pitcher, so they had plenty of heart-to-heart -heart talks, I'm sure, through the years. Anyway, that's pack two here on Baseball Card Illustrated as we roll on through with 1989 Tops and talk a little bit about the series, some things we're going to do, and we'll have that and more right after this. Fun is the name of the game here on Baseball Card Illustrated, and one thing we're going to start doing is taking a card or two out of each pack and sending them through the mail to particular players hoping to get an autograph. Figure, why not take a hobby of mine from my childhood when I used to collect cards and send them in and see if I can get autographs and we're going to bring that back so we'll see if we can get Juan Berenguer to sign this card and maybe even personalize it with the Berenguer Boogie and we'll see if he'll return that to us we'll keep track of that and we got players from other sets that we've opened and looked through 1989 Upper Deck, 1987 Tops, 1988 Fleer and of course these bad boys here the 1984 Tops We'll see if players are willing to sign those and send them back, and we'll provide an update on every edition coming up of Baseball Card Illustrated. Now, on to the next pack. Welcome back to Baseball Card Illustrated, where we're sliding in the third with Tim Rock Reigns and his starting lineup from back in the day here. Now we'll have a hovering Tim Reigns. A little bit of fun with that as we move on to pack three of 1989 Tops. And we talk a little bit about some of the things that we're going to do on upcoming editions of Baseball Card Illustrated. Looking forward to seeing how successful we are in getting some autographs from some of our favorite players that we find along the way here. Here's an opportunity now to buy a t-shirt from the Topps Corporation. Um, a little bit probably past the expiration date on that, but that's what they were pushing out there back in 1989. So, yeah, a couple of editions coming up here on future editions of the show as we talk about Mike Scott, who was one of the underrated pitchers of the 80s. A couple 18 win seasons in a row, ERAs in the twos and threes for the Astros as they were very competitive at the time. And yeah, so we're going to make the videos a little bit shorter. Um, our original intent was always to go 30 minutes, and we got a little bit beyond 30 in our first several episodes, so we're going to tighten that up a little bit. We purchased a little bit of equipment that we'll be using starting with our next edition to make things look a little bit better and looking forward to some of these changes and hope you enjoy them and if you got any suggestions please leave a comment we're always looking for ways to be better and be more entertaining for you as Charlie Liebrandt joins the uh, baseball card illustrated team here for this episode longtime pitcher for the Royals and a number of other teams in a very long career. Here's Terry Clark, a pitcher for the Angels. Got Mickey Hatcher, longtime Dodger. And here's a guy that had a long career, Luis Polonia. Played for the A's around this era. Got Mitch Williams. And we'll move on now to kind of clear the deck here for this guy as we go to a relief pitcher with a pretty interesting history. Looks like we're going to have a few relievers. Obviously, we already had Mitch Williams, and he certainly had some colorful moments throughout the course of his career. But Calvin Chiraldi, who was with the Red Sox during their run in 1986 when they went to the World Series, and obviously things didn't work out too well. He was obviously pitching in that game against the Walt Terrell Less Mets team when the game six where Bill Buckner had the air on the Mookie Wilson grounder. Um, should be pointed out, Calvin Chiraldi was not pitching at that time. He'd already come out of that game, but he was part of that team and struggled a little bit as a young closer for those Red Sox during that playoff run, but, you know, was still around in 1987 and struggled, obviously, with a 4.41 ERA, 4.38 in 1988 with the Cubs as they tried to make him a starter. So, one of those guys that started in relief, they tried him as a starter, and, you know, sometimes that happens. Here's Greg Olson. Now, this was one of the guys that I liked as a kid, um, a closer for the Baltimore Orioles. That's Greg with two Gs, Olson. I think that's probably the first Greg I remember, especially first name, Greg, 
with two G's at the end of his name. Um, we got Dave Otto here from the o Oakland A's. Mickey Brantley from the Seattle Mariners. And then some sweet music is going to be played by Frank Viola. He was a hero of the World Series champion Minnesota Twins in 87. That is Oswald Peraza from the Orioles. Jim Presley from the Mariners. Raphael Santana from the New York Yankees. And the final card of this pack is one of the guys I always liked. I was a White Sox fan of this era, starting in about probably 1990, um, as the Big Hurt and Rob Ventura, Blackjack McDowell started to make a name for the White Sox in the final year of Comiskey Park before moving into the new stadium and had a really nice run that ultimately fell a few games short of the powerhouse Oakland A's, but Lance Johnson was a big part of their success during the early part of the 90s. So the one dog, leadoff hitter, outfielder, and a speedster and all those good things. So anyway, that is pack three here of 1989 Tops on a Kevinless edition of Baseball Card Illustrated. Fun is the name of the game here on Baseball Card Illustrated, where Kevin and I rip open packs in search of rookies, Hall of Famers, and our favorite players. We also have some fun with the cards we find along the way, such as this Big Cat Andres Galarraga card where he's saying meow, a blue border parallel of a 1989 stick of Topps gum, and this two triple game card of Phil Bradley from the Phillies who accomplished the feat on May 22, 1987, and they got around to celebrating it in 1989. If you enjoy what you're watching, please subscribe, hit the like button, and enjoy this next pack of 1989 Tops. We are rounding third and heading for home here on this edition of Baseball Card Illustrated. As I'm Bronco flying solo today, we're going to go to pack number four, the final one of this particular edition, as we look for some of the great cards and memorable players listed and shown and depicted here in 1989 on Tops. And this will be a pretty fun pack. We'll start out with Rick Shu. That's S-C-H-U, just in case you were wondering. Coming up next, we got Scott Fletcher from the Rangers. He played for a number of teams during this time frame. Got a former brewer there with Dickie Thon, one of the more fun names of 1980s and early 90s baseball. Toronto checks in with our good friend Nelson Liriano. Remember him being, I think he was a Let's see here real quick. This one is a second baseman. I kind of remember him being a utility player, but could well be. He had some big moments in 1987. He collected his first big league hit on August 25th of that year. His first home run a couple days later on the 30th. And he laced, their words, not mine, his first big league double on September the 4th, 1987 when he played in 37 games for Toronto and batted 241. There's everything you ever wanted to know about Nelson Liriano. Coming up next is Andy Ashby, who was a, or I should say Alan Ashby, who was a catcher for the Padres at the time. Or Padres, the Astros. Boy, I'm all over the place here, aren't I? See, that's, that's why it's hard for me to fly solo. We, we need Kevin keeping me under control. <laughs> Um, taking a look at the Astros of that era. They still played in Houston, even though I had them somehow doing something other than, you know, being that. And that guy there would uh, be coming for his job in the not-too-distant future, Craig Biggio, who we found in an earlier pack. I think Kevin and I have talked about this guy here with the unfortunate name for a pitcher of Bob Walk. Move on to, well, I'll save a little bit of the best for last here, and I'm sorry, Dave Hengel, if that's how it's pronounced. You are, unfortunately, not the best, so we didn't have to save you. Got Mark McLemore, another angel with Dick Schofield. Put this up here by our friend Roger Craig, because that's the San Francisco Giants leader card. Take a look at who led the 
Giants that year. Offensively, Brett Butler was one of their leaders in runs and hits and stolen base. He had 43 steals in 1988. Will Clark had 31 doubles and 29 home runs and 190, 109, I should say, RBIs. Otherwise, I would have set a record. Um, Brett Butler also had nine triples that year. On the pitching side of thing, it was Rick Russell with 19 wins. Don Robinson led the club with 122 strikeouts. That wouldn't get you too far today. Scott Geraltz had 13 saves and 65 appearances. And Don Robinson led with an ERA of 2.45. And this guy here, can't, not quite sure who this guy with the eyes closed rounding third base is, but he's getting a high five, so it's probably a home run. Got Tim Flannery from the uh, San Diego Padres next. He was a second baseman. Up next is Ricky Horton. I think Kevin has a story about him that he'll share on an upcoming edition of Baseball Card Illustrated. One of the best names, one of the Chris Berman specials, Don Onslaught, catcher for the Yankees. Now we'll finish off with two pretty good cards here. Um, start with, I know this is one of Kevin's favorite players, Dale Murphy. Unfortunately, that's not a reverse negative or anything, so that won't be worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars or anything. And I don't know what I can tell you about this guy that you probably don't already know, no pun intended. Bo Jackson, the two-sport star, played baseball for the Royals and later the White Sox, played football for the Raiders, and one of the great athletes of our time. Unfortunately, he had a little bit of injury problems with a hit during a football game that ended his football career and eventually impacted his baseball career, but... One of the legendary athletes in the history of sports, Bo Jackson. They had the great Nike campaign of Bo Knows. Just one of the tremendous superstars to ever play any sport. And a lot of fun to watch him, that's for sure. And hopefully you had a lot of fun watching. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of Baseball Card Illustrated, Bronco Flies Solo. Hope you enjoyed our look at 1989 Tops and are excited and will check out our changes which are coming in future weeks. On behalf of Kevin, Bo Jackson, and Craig Biggio, I'm Bronco reminding you to go have some fun and check out the Juan Berenguer Boogie. So long everybody, you've been watching Baseball Card Illustrated.